Here are some example problems for free fall acceleration. As a reminder, free fall means the only acceleration is gravity. It is downward and near the surface of the Earth has a constant magnitude of 9.8 meters per second squared. Based on this definition, we can set up our kinematic equations in the y coordinate with the vertical acceleration being negative g. In our first example, we start with an initial velocity upward and we need to find what happens throughout the trajectory motion-wise. Read the problem for kinematic quantities about height, velocity, and if given time, as well as take note of the wording to clue you in that this is indeed a free fall problem. The word thrown in this case is the clue that the object, after being released with an initial velocity, is in free fall. Take note of what is being asked for. We need to find the maximum height, total time in the air, and final velocity. With so many variables, it is important to draw in these variables at each of the critical points. At the beginning, maximum height, and at the end. Do not forget to set up your coordinate system. In part A, we need to find the maximum height. We know the initial velocity, and implicitly we know the final velocity as the projectile reaches maximum height. By definition, the vertical velocity at that point is zero. Hence, for this first part, the simplest equation to use is the third one. We solve this equation for the unknown, being very careful on handling the negative signs. Then we plug in with units to get our answer. For part B, finding the total time, we'll take the careful approach of breaking the problem into event intervals. The first interval is 
from the beginning throw to maximum height. We select the equation with the least number of unknowns. In this case, we know the initial vertical velocity and we know the vertical velocity at maximum height. We use this equation Solve for the unknown, again being careful with the negative sign, plug in with units and solve. The second event interval is from maximum height to when the projectile hits the rooftop. Note that we have more knowns this time because in a previous part of the problem we have calculated what that maximum height was. This means that now we can use the middle equation where now time is the only unknown. Also, be careful to plug in for new starting point, which in this case is that of the maximum height. This does mean that when we simplify it, one of the terms drops out and we get a simple solution that we can plug in for. Because this is the time only for the second time interval, don't forget to add it to the first time interval. For the last question of this problem, once again, use the previous answers to select the equation with the least unknowns. Because now we know the total time, we can simply use the first equation to block into to get an answer. Remember to reread the problem and check that your answers make sense. In this case, it is important to note that the maximum height must be greater than the final height. It is also important to check that your final velocity is negative and in this case must have smaller magnitude than the initial velocity. In our second example, we are given the maximum height a thrown ball reaches, but we need to know what was its initial velocity.
Notice that this is physically the same problem as before. We just replaced one unknown for another. The solution strategy will be identical with the exception of rearranging the algebra of the equation for a different variable. Again, we start by reading the problem. We check that the problem implies free fall and we take note of what is the unknown. Again, we write in the relevant variables at each event. We also set up the coordinate system. Because time is not given, nor is important in this case, we choose the third kinematic equation for free fall. We solve for the unknown, plug in with units, and get our answer. Be especially careful on making sure you correctly applied squares and square roots. Finally, check that your answer is sensible. This is especially important in such quadratic problems where a square root is involved. Remember that in quadratic problems, there are always two solutions. When taking the square root, you should have an answer that is both plus and minus. This is why it is always important when rereading the problem to look at the picture and check that the answer you have chosen agrees with what the object should be doing at that time. In this case, we have chosen the positive solution because initially we expect the ball to be moving upward.